Hi, my name is Bokhadar Ahmedov. In this video lecture, we are going to continue our discussions about polar coordinates. And in particular, we're going to discuss about curves in polar coordinates. Well, if you remember, if you, we've defined the points in polar coordinates with one pair of numbers, r and theta, where r actually means the distance between the point and the origin, which is going to be the center of the coordinate system, and theta is going to be the angle which connects the pole and the, this line, which connects the point and the origin. And also we've learned about how to find the coordinates of the same point in the rectangular coordinates if you're given the polar one and vice versa. We've learned about the correspondence between the polar and the rectangular coordinates. Well, we can do this using the following equations. The x is going to be equal to the r times to the cosine of theta, and y is equal to the r times to the sine of theta. And if you are given the point with the coordinates r and theta, and just substitute them to here and to here to find its corresponding x and y coordinates. And at the same time, if you are given x and y coordinates of the point, you have to substitute them into the following equations. So r in the square is going to be equal to the cosine, oops, sorry, x in the square plus y in a square, and tangent of the theta is going to be equal to the y divided to the x, so just substitute the coordinates of your point from the rectangular into these two equations in order to find the, co the polar coordinates of the same point. So in this like lecture, we are going to de 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 describe the curves, so how we can describe the curves like circles or the lines or circle cardiot or four leafed uh, curves in the polar coordinates. So let's say you're given, so let's do this from the example. So if you remember, we've learned about how to sketch the curves in rectangular coordinates, right? So for example, uh, you're going to, if you're given the curve in the form of y is equal to some function of the x, right? You're going to change the x in order to find the values of the y and figure out what is going to be the curve. For example, if y is, is equal to the x, what you're going to do is you're going to choose the different values on the x-axis and figure out the, its coordinates, y coordinates, by just putting this into this equation. So for example, if x is equal to the 0, it's going to be 0. If x is equal to the 1, it's going to be 1. If x is equal to say 2, it's going to be 2 and so on, then we are going to simply connect this. At the same time, if, for example, y is going to be independent from the x, for example, if I say y is going to be equal to the 2, well, in this case, it doesn't matter what is the value of the x, the coordinates of y coordinates of all of the points along this line or along this curve is always equal to the 2 which means that that's going to be simply the curve, right? So it's simply the line which is passing through this point t. Y is equal to the t. Well, if you choose any point on this line, all of them are going to have the y coordinate to be equal to the t. So the similar idea we're going to use in order to sketch the curves in polar coordinates. So let's say you're given the curve, which is given with the equation r is equal to the 2, simply. So how we can sketch this? So what does it mean? So if theta is not described, it means that no matter what is the theta, the values of the r is always going to be equal to the t. Well, if you remember, the value of the r means the distance between the points and um, between the points and the and the origin, right? So this is the origin. So we're not described by the r. So Let's say r to be equal to the 2, it's going to be here, right? So then I'm just going to connect all of the points which are, uh, which are in the distance of 2 from the origin. So r is equal to the 2, it means that all of the points along this curve, no matter what is that curve, have a distance, have equidistant from the origin by the distance of 2, which is definition of a circle. So it appears circles can be described by just simple equation in the polar coordinates. At the same time, if I would just draw the curve r is equal to the 4, for example, or 3, then I would just find a distance from the origin in the distance of 4, and then I would just 
sketch the circle roughly like this okay the same as so the distance from the origin until any point along this circle is going to be equal to z4 um and and along this curve any point along this curve is going to be equidistant from the origin by the distance of two so this is how we are going to sketch the circles in polar coordinates with the center at the origin well we can do this with the center at the different points so we're going to come back to this in a moment so now let's say we are going to so we will be given another curve so let's do another example so let's say our curve now is given to be theta is equal to the one so again r is not defined r means that the points along that curve can be at any distance again it doesn't matter what is going to be the distance between the point and the origin the angle between the points is, should be always to be equal to the one right uh, or yeah to be to be a one or you can do this to be equal to the pi over four let's say so which is going to be better for for, for the better understanding of what we are going to do so i'm going to sketch the pole again so that's going to be our pole so we need to figure out a point so just give me a point which is going to be at, a, at, a, at, a, at any distance so for example this point so that the angle here is going to be equal to the pi over 4 so this point satisfies this equation right at the same time this point also satisfies this equation because it is in the same angle or this point satisfies the same equation and so on so at the same time this point for example here also satisfies this equation because for example this point might have the coordinate minus 1 and pi over 4. And if you remember, minus 1 means that I need to sketch the point with the coordinates 1 and pi over 4. And, and, and find a symmetric one in the opposite quarter. So if this point with the coordinates 1 and pi over 4 is going to be in the first quarter, the point was the negative minus uh, negative r and pi over 4 it's going to be in the third quarter so this is how we're going to sketch the point with the coordinates minus 2 and pi over 4 and minus 3 and pi over 4 and so on so i'm just going to connect this so it appears in order to describe a line in the coordinates in the polar coordinates i have to just tell its angle or i would say it tell its slope so if i would do this for example theta is equal to the pi of two that's going to be simple the vertical line right which basically tells me that it is going to pass through the origin and any point along that curve along this line should have the angle pi of two okay so this curve here so this is going to be the pole and this curve is going to be simply the vertical line so this is going to be simply theta is equal to the pi of t so that looks a little bit strange so especially with with, with comparison with the cartesian coordinates but that's the beauty of the polar coordinates it enables us to draw a different curves you know in a very simple way so now let's discuss another curve Let's do another example. So let's say r is going to be equal to the t times the cosine of theta. So we have to figure out or we have to try to sketch this curve and at the same time find its Cartesian, uh, find its Cartesian equation. Cartesian equation. Okay, so I think in order to sketch this curve, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose, I'm going to make a table for the different values of the theta and figure out the values for the r. So the theta can be equal to the 0, to the pi over 6, to the pi over 4, pi over 3, 
pi over t, t pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 6, or pi. Let's try to do this together. And the r is going to be equal to simply 2 times the cosine of the theta. So when the theta is equal to the 0, cosine of 0 is going to be 1. So the r is simply going to be equal to the 2. So at the same time, let's try to sketch this out. So that's going to be my origin, and that's going to be my pole. Um, so let's try to sketch a line here as well. So let's say this is going to be 2. So when the theta is equal to the 0, I've got this point. So pi over 6 means that cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2 multiplied to the 2. It's going to be square root of 3. And that point is going to be, so pi over 6 here should be 30 degrees, right? So that's going to be 45 degrees. So let's try to do this for the 45 degrees. It's going to be square root of 2, right? So for the 45 degrees, it is going to be square root of 2. Somewhere here maybe, right? So square root of 2 and pi over 4. For the 30 degrees, which is like a little bit more than the half of the pi over 4, it's going to be somewhere here. It is going to be square root of 3 and pi over 6. So for the, um, for the pi over 3, so when the theta is equal to the pi over 3, if I substitute this to here, it's going to be cosine of pi over 3, which is equal to 1 over 2, right? It's going to be 1 times 1 over 2, or simply 1. So that's going to be equal to the 1 at the pi over 3. Pi over 3 is 60 degrees. It is more than 45, a little bit. So probably it's going to be somewhere, somewhere here. So that's going to be equal to 1 and pi over 6. So whenever I've got pi over 2, so it's going to be 2 times the cosine of pi over 2, it's going to be simply 0, it's going to be 0. So when the angle is equal to the pi over 2, that's going to be equal to the 0. So you can continue this points and you can figure out that that's going to look like very much similar to the circle, right? So if you continue, you're going to get the similar one on the downside as well, so sorry for my bad drawings, but you're going to get a circle with the center at the point. So if it would be the rectangular coordinates, that would be just 1 and 0. So this is the equation of the circle, which looks super strange, right? So the, the equation of a circle with the radius r, or radius t, for example, when at the, at the, with the center at the origin would be simply r is equal to the 2. And while the equation of a circle with the radius 1 was the origin 1 and 0 is going to be 2 times the cosine of theta, which is super strange. So now let's figure out the equation of this curve in the rectangular coordinates. So, well, if you remember, so we are given the curve to be r is equal to the 2 times. So let's do the second part. Find the Cartesian equation. So we are given a curve, r is equal to the t times to the cosine of theta. At the same time, if you remember, the definition of the x is equal to the r times cosine of theta. So from here, I can find that cosine of the theta is going to be equal to x divided to the r, and I'm just going to substitute this to here. So I will get r is equal to the t times x divided to the r, or simply r and the square is equal to the 2x. Okay, and if you remember, so we r in the square is equal to the x in the square plus y in the square from one side. So this is, this is given in the beginning, very beginning of the lecture. So this is how we have transferred the points from the Cartesian into the polar coordinates. And at the same time, through this equation, we figure out that r in the square is equal to the 2x. And I can just substitute this to the left-hand side. So it's going to be equal to the 2x. So I've got the equation. So x in the square minus 2x 
plus y in the square is equal to the zero. We have to try to figure out what is going to be its full square, complete square form. So in order to do this, x squared minus 2x. So I'm just going to add 1 here so that this is going to be complete square. So let me write this with a different color. Plus 1 artificially and minus 1 because I, I'm not going to change anything in this equation. So please note that this equation, the first equation, it is the same as the second equation. I just added 1 so that this term here is simply going to be x minus 1 in the square plus y in the square and this minus 1 goes to the right so that it is equal to the 1 and if you remember this is the, nothing else and the, as an equation of a circle was the radius 1 and the origin at the point 1 and 0 this is what we've got here. So this is the circle with the radius 1 and the, uh, the origin was the, was the coordinates 1 and 0. So you see, so the points in the polar coordinates or the curves in polar coordinates are going to be defined in a different way. So, and that's the advantage of the, of the polar coordinates actually. So let's continue. So we are going to consider two more curves which are going to be used later on in this in this course for 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 different applications. So let's define another one. R is equal to the one plus sine of theta. So first of all what I want is I would like to sketch the curve of this um, the, the, this curve in the Cartesian coordinates, if r would be the vertical line and if the theta was be, would be the horizontal line, it would be very much similar to the sine of x, right? The sine of theta. So that, but it is going to be simply added one. So this is going to be one here. This is going to be equal to the two. When theta is equal to the zero, sine of theta, sine of zero is going to be equal to the zero. So that is why I'm going to have one. So when theta is equal to the zero, r is going to be equal to the one plus sine of zero, which is equal to the one, right? So when theta is equal to pi over two, then sine of pi over two plus one is going to be equal to the two. So it's going to be equal to the two. When theta is equal to the pi, again, it's going to be sine of pi plus 1, which is equal to the 0, right? And that's going to be equal to the 1 again. When theta is equal to the 3 pi over t, so theta is equal to the 3 pi over t, it's going to be 0, because sine of 3 pi over t is going to be minus 1, and if I add the 1, it's going to be equal to the 0. So that's why it's going to be 0 here. And when the theta is equal to the 2 pi, again, it's going to be equal to the 1. So I'm just going to sketch this curve in so-called Cartesian coordinates. And so using this curve, I'm going to figure out the shape of this curve in the polar coordinates. So it should help me a little bit. So let me let me do this. Let me sketch first of all just some lines here. So I'm I I would just need a pole actually first of all and the origin. So we have to start rotating the pole at the different angles, right? So first of all, so I'm I'm going to sketch this point. This point. So this point has the radius r, right? r is going to be the vertical line here, and the theta is going to be the angle. When the theta is equal to the 0, the r should be equal to the 1. That's going to be this point. So the length is going to be equal to the 1. So you can see here that as I'm going to increase the theta until pi over 2, so the the values of the r are also increasing. It's going to be more and more distance from the origin, right? 
And when the theta is equal to the pi over t, it's going to be equal to the t, right? So when the theta is equal to pi over t, r is equal to the t. And that's going to be this point here on the polar coordinates. So this point has the coordinates t and pi over t, actually, because it is distanced from the origin for the distance of t. And at the same time, the angle is equal to the pi over t. And, and if you remember the behavior of this curve between 0 and pi over 2, it was increasing all the time. So the distance of all of the points should be more than 1, right? I can't really just close this like this because that would be a circle. So it should be something like this. You can see here that the distances of all of the points are always been increasing. So now let's, let's try to sketch this further. So I'm just going to draw the pole in, the, in, the, in this direction as well. So you can see here that at the pi, the value of the r is equal to 1. So at the pi, so this is the pi, right? So this angle is going to be equal to the pi. Its value is equal to the 1. And the distance between uh, the origin and the points have been decreasing. So I would guess it's going to be very much symmetric or something like this. Right? Cool. So I, I'm, I'm going to go further. So if I'm going to go to this angle, so this, this point is 0 and 3 pi over t. So this 3 pi over 2 is going to be equal to the 0. So this is here. And you can see here that the distance is, oh, it's, it's equal to the 0. It means that the distance should be equal to the zero, right? So this point is, is going to be like this. But you can see here that the r, the values of the r here, are between the values of the r, are between zero and one. So it should be one here. And it should be between zero and one, similar like this. And if I'm going to continue further, so, at the t pi, so the t pi is going to be here, right? So this point is going to have the t pi. It is going to have the value to be equal to the 1. It says 1 and t pi, actually. Um, and you can see here that the values of the r is between 0 and 1 again. So it starts from the 0 and it adds at the 1. So this is going to be the shape of the curve in the polar coordinates. In the polar coordinates, it is going to be like this. And the rectangular coordinates, rectangular coordinates, if I would just look to this as a rectangular coordinates, that would be like this. So since it looks like a herd, we are going to call this curve as the cardiot. Cardiot. So you can see here that with this simple equation, which is r is equal to the 1 plus sine of theta, we can draw a beautiful curves in polar coordinates. So let's do one more exercise. So in, the, in this case, we are going to try to sketch the curve of the following uh, equation. So the r is equal to the cosine of 2 theta, simply. So if you remember previously, we used to have r is equal to the 2 times cosine of theta. That would be a circle with the origin at the point 1 and 0 and with the radius 1. And let's see what kind of curve we're going to have if we are going to draw cosine of 2 theta. So first of all, so, uh, I would like to sketch its curve or de sketch the dependency between r and theta in the Cartesian system. So let's say that's going to be theta and that's going to be the r. And you need to help me to figure out the values of the r for the different values of the theta. So the, if the theta is equal to the 0, so it's going to be cosine of 0, that's going to be equal to the 1, right? But if the theta is equal to the pi over 4, if you substitute the pi over 4 here, it's going to be equal to the pi, cosine of pi over t, which, which is equal to the 0. So it goes down. And at the pi over 2, it goes down until minus 1, because if you substitute pi over 2 here, that's going to be 2 times pi over 2, which is going to be cosine of pi, which is minus 1. 
Then after this, it is going to go up, oops, at the pi, it goes up and, uh, sorry, to 3 pi over 4, it goes up, and at the pi, it goes up until the 1 again. Then I'm just going to add up pi over, two, pi over 4 every time, so 5 pi over 4, then 3 pi over 2, then 7 pi over 4, then 2 pi. So you may guess that it is going to look like this. The call sign was a period smaller than 2 pi. In, in this case, the period of the call sign is going to be simply pi, right? Because you started from this point, you're going to come back to the same point here. And the reason why I drew this like t until 2 pi is because if you remember the theta, so in order to sketch this curve in the whole coordinates, I have to start with the pole, right, and have to rotate this as a t pi and look for the points. So let's do this now together. So this curve should definitely help us to sketch its curve. So I'm going to draw a pole, and at the same time, I would need these two curves as well. So we need to start from the from the theta is equal to the zero. When theta is equal to the zero, the value of the r is equal to the one. We're going to start from the one. So let's say this is going to be one. So as I'm going to go from zero, so zero degrees to the pi over four, so that's going to be equal to the pi over four, right? which is the half of this. So let me sketch this with a different color. So if I'm going to go for the theta from 0 to the pi over 4, the values of the r are decreasing actually. So it becomes 0, decreasing. So the shape of the curve is going to be similar to this one. So it it's, it decreases and it reaches zero. You can see here that this point has the this point here has the coordinates one and zero, right? One the distance from the origin and zero in terms of the angle. And this point is going to be zero and pi over four. Well, at the same time, if I'm going from pi over four until pi over two, the value of the r is still decreasing from 0 to the minus 1, it means that it goes far away from the origin to the distance of 1. But the problem is, so it is going to the negative r. If you remember, so if that would be positive r, then it would be in the first quarter. But since it is in the negative r, it is going to be in the third quarter. So instead of drawing this here, I would draw this here like this. So this is going to be uh, the point was the coordinates minus 1 and pi over 2. Right? If you remember, so the same point could be drawn like by just drawing 1 and pi over 2 and find its symmetric 1 in the opposite quarter. So as I'm going from the pi over 2 until 3 pi over 4, right? So until 3 pi over 4, the r is going to change from minus 1 until 0. So it comes closer to the 0. And you can imagine that this curve is going to be equal to like this. So again, so as I'm going from 3 pi over 4 until pi, so it is going to increase now from 0 to the 1. So, so as I'm going from 3 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4 is this angle, right? So this is 3 pi over 4. Mm. I'm going to say pi, it is going to increase until the 1. So it is going to be something like this. So sorry for my bad drawings. So it is going to be like this. So then as I'm going from pi to the pi over 4, so 5 pi over 4, so it goes decreasing, right? So from 1 to the 0, it means that it comes closer 
to the origin so but it is going to be here so please note that this is theta is equal to the pi over 4 this is theta is equal to the pi over 2 this is theta is equal to the 3 pi over 4 this is theta is equal to the pi this is theta is equal to the 5 pi over 4 theta is equal to the 3 pi over 2 and so on I would need this angle as well so now we are here so as I'm going from 5 pi over 4 until pi over 2 it again decreases from 0 to the minus 1 it goes away from the origin which is a distance of minus 1 right so I would sketch this and instead of sketching this now so from from 5 pi over 4 this from here to here instead of sketching this in the third quarter I'm going to sketch this in the uh, in the in the first quarter and this point this curve goes like this then from 3 pi over 4 until pi uh, pi 4 pi over 7 it comes back to the origin and at the end it closes like this so i know that it might be a little bit confusing but you should you should always look to this curve you know to sketch this curve and it appears the equation of this curve in the polar coordinates is simply r is equal to the cosine of 2 theta. Well, again, you may see here that you can draw beautiful curves in polar coordinates with the simple equations. So that's the curves in polar coordinates. So in our next video lectures, we are going to apply some tools of calculus in order to find the tangent lines, in order to find the angles or areas inside this cruise. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope that this was helpful for you.